Created me a clean, clean heart. Created me a work of art. Created me a miracle. Something real and something beautiful. Created me a clean, clean heart. Created me a
Amen. Yeah. It's Easter. So the, the early church greeted each other uh, with a statement, He is risen. And they responded with, He is risen indeed, right? That was like the undercover covert word. So He is risen. He is risen Amen. You sounded great. Welcome online if you're worshiping with us this morning. Uh, a couple of things, really quickly, just to be mindful of. If we lose our online feed, we'll try to get things up and to the. Uh, to the website and our Facebook page this afternoon. We know that on Easter Sunday, there's a lot of glitches going on in the cyber world, stuff I don't understand, but uh, we'll try to get it there for you if we lose the feed during the service. I'm Pastor Joe. It's good to be here with you this morning. We got a lot of moving parts and a few different things happening today. So as we celebrate our risen Savior, we also want you to experience the joy of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Would you join me in prayer this morning? Holy God, we thank you and we praise you that we can gather in your name, Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you indeed are Lord. Father, would your Holy Spirit move among us today and manifest your presence in ways like never before as we experience the glory of the risen King, both now and forevermore. Transform us from the inside out, Jesus, and receive our offering of praise as we worship in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
would like to welcome all kids to an Easter egg hunt after the service at the carport. And for you and for anyone who wants to go and pick up an Easter kit, it's just outside Hayden. I'm missing some people up here. Band, you are welcome to come up to the stage. <laughs> well, good morning, friends. Isn't it a great morning? Yeah, man, I uh, had the, the privilege uh, to be up at the Overlook at 7 a.m. this morning for the least frigid Easter I can remember in recent memory. Um, but man, what a, what a beautiful thing it is to hear the Easter story as the sun is rising. Um, I don't know about you, but I woke up this morning giddy. Um, like I said, it is, a, it is an incredible day today, um, and I'm so excited that we have um, the opportunity to worship together this morning. So um, I'd ask that you would stand as you're willing and able um, and join us in worship tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> this morning.
this morning. Thank you for this beautiful weather. And thank you that we were able to come up back again this Easter, all together as one congregation and worship you. Lord, we thank you for you what, for what you did on that cross and in that tomb. Thank you, God, for the promise of eternity. Thank you for all of the provisions that you've brought into our lives here, Lord. And I just pray that you still our hearts, you still our minds so that we can listen and we can hear what you have to say this morning. Thank you for today. Thank you that you said you would rise again and you did it, Lord, and what that means for us. Lord, I pray that today you would fall fresh upon us. We know that you're here working in this room and you're working in the lives of everybody here. 
God, give us a slap in the face if we need it, and give us a gentle nudge if that's what we need. God, today is your day. Do with it what you will. In your name we pray, amen. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body bowed and drenched in tears they laid him down in joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone messiah still and all
we've come to the time in our service where um, we normally would have our offering. Um, just to remind you, or if it's the first time you've heard, we do have um, options to give online on our website. Uh, we also have a, an offering basket in the back if uh, that's what you prefer. Uh, but as we reflect um, on the blessings that our Father has given us, would you reflect upon this verse with me today? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Psalms 34, 8. Inspired by that, would you declare this with me this morning? As I give in today's offering, I believe that the Lord is a loving, kind, and generous God. He is my provider. Lord God, you bless us in countless ways. Whether we see it or not, we know that that's true, Lord. We pray that today, as we reflect upon that and we remember the ways that you bless us, that we would be able to bless others in the same way, Lord. Whether that's through a smile or the offering today, God, um, have your will with the things that we can offer. In your name we pray, amen. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures of faith Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find.
You may be seated. It's Easter. You'll notice that I'm not wearing my cowboy boots today. And uh, I've got a suit and a tie on. And it was, uh, I was feeling a little bit special this morning, so I even got my good socks on. <laughs> Something had to not match, but we got polka dots on both of them. I'm Pastor Joe. It's good to be here with you this morning. And, uh, you know, amen. Give the Lord a hand, right? God has done all things. Scripture makes it crystal clear that, that we left to our own devices, we can't do anything, but by the grace of God, we can do everything, right? And uh, a few things that I want to invite you to this morning is, if you're visiting with us today, welcome, right? Welcome. And I would invite you that, that if you don't have a home church, we want to be part of your family. If you do have a home church, go back there after this Sunday and celebrate again and again and again what God is continually doing. Right? Every Sunday is Easter. Every Sunday is a mini resurrection Sunday. It's why we gather to celebrate, to praise the Lord. You know, um, on Tuesday, we went and uh, did a little bit of shopping. Did anybody else uh, go shopping for Easter clothes? Right? I couldn't find a shirt, a new shirt. I couldn't, thank you. Somebody else did. Whew! Thought I was the only one. Uh, and I couldn't help but overhear a mother and a, and a and a daughter talking in the, in the aisle. And, and the mother said to the daughter, the daughter was like, well, I don't know, Ma, what am I going to wear? And, and the mother said, honey, we're here to pick out a new Easter dress for you. And I thought about the significance of that statement that they wanted to look their very best this Sunday. You know, we're not coming to a funeral today. We're not just coming to a celebration of life today. We're coming to a party because the grave is empty. Amen. And as we celebrate the risen Savior, there are lots of different responses to that. There's lots of different emotions that go along with that. But I want you to know a couple of things. The first is that God deeply loves you. That God deeply loves you. And if you were the only person on planet Earth that Jesus Christ would have died for you, and he did die for you, and he died for me, and he died for all of humanity that day. You see, sometimes what happens in life is we have ingrained in us this mental image that, that life is full of empty promises, don't we? That it's just too good to be true, whatever it is. That there must be some string attached or some scam attached to it. Well, here's the truth of the gospel, that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. There is no scam. It is the greatest upset in all of history, and it is on that fulcrum that life pivots, period. The old continues to point to it, and the new continues to look back to it until Christ comes again in final victory. A lot of people, and maybe this is yourself included, acknowledge the resurrection. Uh, Gallup did a poll, and they said 84% of people living in America acknowledge that Jesus from Nazareth was crucified, died, was buried, and that he rose from the dead. Right? It is not a, a fictitious thing. It is, it is a true fact, historically proven. Hundreds of people saw him after his death and resurrection. Countless eyewitnesses. And yet still today we struggle with hopelessness at times. The single greatest thing is that God loves you and he has given you a hope and a future. Amen? And as we move forward from today, we're going to ask a lot of questions, but one of the two things we're going to look at is we're going to look at what did it mean for Jesus to raise from the dead? What did the resurrection mean? And the next one, which is of utmost importance, which you probably want to pay most attention to, is why does that matter to me? Why does that matter to me? If you brought your Bibles, I'd invite you to turn with me to the Gospel of John as we read yet again this sacred story. The word of God is, is sharper than any double-edged sword. It's able to sever bone on marrow. It is the word of God. It is true. It is not to be in question. It is not to be interrogated. For thousands of years it has, and it has continued to prove the test of time over and over and over again. When God speaks, it happens. Would you pray for me this morning? Holy God, we ask that your spirit would continue to move in magnificent and manifest ways this morning. Lord, that as your word is read and the gospel of Jesus Christ proclaimed, 
that you would receive honor and glory and praise. Father, whether through me or in spite of me, continue to minister and encourage and equip. Continue to give hope and life to your church today, both now and forevermore, Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. If you brought your Bibles, we're going to be in the Gospel of John, chapter 20. This narrative comes after the the Sabbath, and uh, it's John's account of what took place that first Easter morning. A few of the players that you need to understand that uh, you're going to meet, one is Mary Magdalene, a woman who loved Jesus deeply, a woman who was... uh, to be believed to, to have multiple demons, which Jesus exercised. A woman who had a lot of trouble in her life, which Jesus empowered her to live as one who is free. Free from the burden and the bondage of sin. You're going to meet, if you don't already know him, a man by the name of Peter. The one who, when the cock crowed twice, denied, denied the Christ three times. You're going to meet the beloved disciple. Scripture doesn't tell us who the beloved disciple was. There's a lot of different ideas of who that beloved disciple is. One thought is that the disciple is not identified so that maybe we can understand that that beloved disciple is indeed you and I. There's much to be taken from this text. It says, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And he bent over and he looked inside at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth which had been wrapped around his head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside, and he saw and believed. They still did not understand from scriptures that Jesus had to rise from the dead. It says, then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking Jesus was the gardener, she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. And Jesus says to her, Mary, Mary's response, she cries out, Rabboni, or teacher. Jesus says, Mary, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to my father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And then Mary Magdalene, the first preacher, of the gospel account, went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had seen, that he had said these things to her. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Easter stories are full of people getting the wrong end of the stick, aren't they? I know our title for today is empty, but I actually think a better title is Resurrection. And uh, as a preacher, sometimes we, 
Sometimes, if you've ever preached or prepared on the front end for something, and then you get to game time, and you got to alter things and come up with a different plan because it's just not sitting right. And last night was that night for me, so I'm going to give Casey, I'm going to pull an audible, and we're not going to advance the slides anymore. That's all you get today. <laughs> because the points that we had earlier in the week aren't the points that God had for you this morning. I didn't sleep but a few winks last night, and I kept crying out, Lord, just let me rest. I'm tired. But I kept being woken up over and over and over again. Some of you had a sleepless night also, didn't you? Some of you have felt at times like you've gotten the short end of the stick. I mean, it's not just because of the UCLA and Gonzaga game either, right? <laughs> Yesterday while we were traveling, I asked uh, my daughters, I need some help. I'm not, it's, just not, it's just not setting right yet. I need some help. And Taylor offered up a really simple statement. She goes, Dad, Easter is the greatest upset in all of history. It's just like the Final Four games, right? Or just like this March Madness tournament. All the brackets have been busted. The reality is Jesus is alive, even though they tried to kill him, even though they tried to lay him to rest. Jesus is alive. The gospel story is full of people getting the raw end of the stick, though, isn't it? Mary thinks Jesus' body has been stolen, right? Peter sees the linen wrappings there and can't work out in his mind what it's all about. The disciple, they didn't understand what the scriptures had been saying all along. The angels question Mary and she still doesn't know what's going on. She speaks directly to her Savior and doesn't recognize him. You could hardly get more misunderstandings into one simple narrative, could you? We do have a little bit of an understanding looking back, though, don't we? They were all filled with tremendous grief. They were all navigating, probably internally, a sense of hopelessness. Because that which they had loved had died. And in the natural world, it ceases to exist. You see, though, the point of this whole narrative, the point of Easter is that Easter has burst forth into our glorious light. In the specific moment of time and space and matter, real history, real people, men and women just like you and just like I experienced the risen Savior that day, and they didn't fully understand it. Our minds can't fully grasp the fullness of the gospel story and the miracle of Easter. We try to take the sea and bottle it into a 20-ounce can. It just simply doesn't work. You see, the fact remains, he is not there, for he is alive. I wonder if we shifted gears a little bit and started to ask some very real questions about the significance or the meaning of the resurrection. People acknowledge that Jesus of Nazareth was raised from the dead or that he was seen after the fact. Historically, we can prove that. There are eyewitness accounts both in and out of the Christian faith. But we still can't wrap our minds around the fullness of the resurrection. But you see, the resurrection means something very significant. The resurrection means that Jesus did exactly what Jesus intended to do. You see, just weeks prior to his death and resurrection, he raised a man from the dead. Do you remember his name? It's Mary and Martha's brother. His name's Lazarus. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, and he made a statement after that that he lived into in just a few short days. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they perish or die, yet shall they live. See, the resurrection means that Jesus did exactly what Jesus said he was going to do. The resurrection means that Jesus accomplished the mission that he came to accomplish. What was the mission of Jesus Christ? Do you remember? The mission of Jesus Christ was very simple. It was to seek and to save that which was lost, to redeem that which was already his, to pay the full penalty for sin. The resurrection of Jesus 
means that you and I can have eternal life. It means the statements of, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? It's been swallowed up. But what about me, Pastor Joe? I understand what it means for Jesus. But what does the resurrection mean for me? You see, because Easter's really not about you. You didn't do anything to raise Jesus from the dead, did you? There's nothing that you can do to... (laughs) Amen. (laughs) If you're able to worship with us, I have no idea if the live feed is going or not, but the littlest of ones is understanding this fully this morning. (laughs) And one of the greatest sounds in a church is that of children. Always. Right? Life. (laughs) Life. Generations to come. Jesus... The resurrection of Jesus Christ was the single greatest event in all of history. It is the gateway to life everlasting. It is the gateway to forgiveness of sins. It is the gateway to, the, to navigating the problems that life might present to you right now. So why does it matter that Jesus is resurrected from the dead? Some don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They can't wrap their minds around it. But it matters entirely to us who are Christians You see, the resurrection of Jesus Christ means that your sins have been forgiven, period. When Jesus said it is finished, that meant it was finished. That means the sins that you committed yesterday have been forgiven. That means the sins that you committed this morning, the sins that you might even be committing right now in your mind have been forgiven. And hear this, church, it means the sins that you will commit tomorrow and into the future have already been forgiven, The resurrection means that you have forgiveness of sins. Here's a word that God gave me last night for some of you and for myself. Some of us are carrying around burdens that are not ours to carry. Some of you are still struggling deeply with sin. You've been gripped by it and you can't shake it. Pride consumes you. Envy and greed are all that goes through your mind. Some of you are still struggling with lust. The scripture says that there are three primary sins, right? The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And some of you are still navigating that right now. Some of you are even actively engaging in sins of adultery, gluttony. Sin grips you because you have not received the fullness of the resurrection and why it matters to you. He broke the curse of sin, period. By the power of the Holy Spirit, whom God gave you, whom God gave us, sin has no grip on our lives. You see, it matters. Some of you are struggling to receive forgiveness from God. Some of you are still struggling to extend forgiveness to others. And some are still struggling to forgive yourself. Church, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Why does it matter? The resurrection matters because we are able to navigate the current problems that we face. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a living and holy good God is present in your lives right now. You don't have to wait to tomorrow to receive that. You don't have to wait till till later in the day to receive that. Right now, God wants to take all of your problems and all of your concerns and help you to navigate them as he would navigate them. And you think about this for a moment. He is the God who death could not keep in the grave. He is alive. There is a couple of other things that I want to call to your attention today. And this is, I told you at the front end, that here are a couple of things. One is that God loves you. That God loves you even in the midst of our brokenness. God loves us. Even in the midst of the things that we're navigating right now that aren't holy, God still loves you. And there's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do to change that. Nothing you can do to alter that. That love is freely given to you. And the promise and the hope that we have as Christians isn't simply in tomorrow. It's in life everlasting. Amen? 
right? The hope isn't just in the things of this natural world. The resurrection gives us hope in resurrection of the body for all of the saints. Just this morning I read the, uh, I heard the news, I didn't read the obituary yet, of a saint that has passed. And uh, a man who just, <laughs> he impacted lives in ways that he didn't know. And he was a little bit of a curmudgeon at times. <laughs> but I remember we, uh, we officiated at, at two different funerals together. And he was the, the preacher that came in, and, and he was kind of loud. And uh, he had his Bible, you know the type, the really thick, big Bibles. And it said KJV on it. Anybody know what KJV stands for? <laughs> King James Version. He meant business. And uh, we were sharing the, 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 the preaching portion of the, of the funeral, and I preached from the Gospel of John, and he opened up the scriptures to Ecclesiastes, and he started talking about seasons. This man understood fully that the resurrection was not just about yesterday or today, but that the resurrection had everything to do with hope for tomorrow and into eternity, that we who are dead have been given life in Jesus Christ. You see, the promise of Easter is really simple. That though death happens, it has no sting any longer. You might have been one of those disciples that day, right? You might have been feeling a little bit like Mary, like a little bit lost, a little bit hopeless, a little bit frazzled. Maybe when you came in today, you weren't really sure exactly of what you were going to experience or taste and see or smell. But the good news remains that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which is lost. And the resurrection matters because your future can be secure. Regardless of how you feel in a moment, Mary didn't understand that it was Jesus she was talking to. You've had a holy encounter with a holy good God this morning. Some of you put your Sunday best on. Because you were expecting it. Others came not really sure, but out of obedience. And you've experienced it. And others yet came kicking and screaming, probably. And you too have experienced the grace of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. You can experience the joy and the difference in your life that resurrection makes if you trust, if you follow. And if you engage in a personal relationship with a God who is not dead, but he is very much alive. Holy God, we thank you and we praise you for today. Lord, we pray for your children, your church this morning, oh God. That we who are awakened by your Spirit's presence this morning would allow the resurrection to take place in our lives. Some of you this morning just need to hear that God loves you and that he is pleased with you and that your past doesn't define where your future is, but that right now in this moment, he is with you and that he will never leave you, he will never forsake you and that you can trust him. that his mercies are new each morning. Thank you, Father, for speaking and ministering to us today that out of an empty tomb came life in the mighty name of the one who set us free, who has given life to our mortal bodies and hope into eternity. We praise you, Jesus, both now and forevermore. You may have missed this on the way in, 
but we're celebrating communion today. Part of the reason we celebrate communion on Easter Sunday is because, well, it's what it's all about, actually. It's all about Jesus. If you didn't get a chance to receive a communion cup on your way in and you'd like one, um, I'd invite you to maybe grab one on your way out or run out now and grab one. You're not going to want to miss the communion of the Holy Spirit and the body of Christ this morning. And you're all welcome to come to this table. Because Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to be in communion with Christ and his holy church, which he has opened to people of all ages and nations and races. You are all welcome to come to this table if you so desire. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to the Father. He broke the bread and he shared it with his disciples. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. When supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to the Father, and he shared it with his disciples. And he said, this cup is the blood of the new covenant. My blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it. And as often as you do, do this in remembrance of me. So church, I invite you this morning to enter into a time of repentance where we position ourselves towards God and say, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me, Father, for I know not what I have done Father, forgive us where we have failed to be an obedient church, where we have sinned against you and against others, where we have broken your laws, where we have not heard the cry of the needy or given food to the hungry, shelter to the displaced, and hope to the hopeless. Father, forgive us, we pray. Let these gifts of bread and Juice become for us the body and blood of Christ, broken and poured out. Lord, that we who are many may become one. One in ministry, one in service, one in mission. Father, may we become one as you are one. By the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. We pray these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Church, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, proving God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The body of Christ broken for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins, take and eat. And the cup of salvation shed that we might have life, even life everlasting. Amen. If you would stand and join me in the doxology, and then the worship team will lead us in song again. It begins like this. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Breathing, 
hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. We are resurrection people. God forgave your sins in Jesus' name. The promise of the Holy Spirit is here to help you navigate today and to give you hope for a future. May the Lord Jesus Christ, the righteous judge, the author and perfecter of the faith, be before you to lead you, beside you to justify you. May Jesus Christ be behind you to defend you and above you to guide you. But my Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, live within your physical bodies, giving you grace upon grace upon grace, enabling you to go and love the hell out of your neighbors in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.